Azula over the course of the beach demonstrates quite a disconcerting and destabilizing transformation. She does not turn into a different person, necessarily. But she attempts to gather a degree of understanding by distancing herself from her persona, from the person she believes she is and that others believe her to be. She wants to understand the world outside the prism of her life as Azula, princess of the Fire Nation. But she cannot. When she attempts to interact with people outside of her position, outside of this series of set roles where she is the dominant, imperious one casting fear into the minds of others, she cannot operate in that kind of environment. She looks absurd, and she knows it. The only time she can gain any kind of appreciation or acceptance is when she lies and manipulates, which is emphatically what she is trying not to do in this instance. The greatest example of this is when she's with the boy she has a crush on, Chan, and she only attracts him and receives his positive attention when she pretends to be someone she is not. When she reveals who she actually is, not in terms of being Azula, but in terms of just allowing her actual personality to flow to the surface and break through the facade she's been projecting, it terrifies him. And we laugh as the audience because we understand his terror. She is, in fact, quite terrifying. But at the same time, the show also invites us to sympathize with that look of unease that Azula allows herself to display right after he leaves. She feels a deep sense of discomfort in herself that she is not used to. She has tried to offer herself up to the world outside of her official position, outside of her status, her power, her authority, and she has been rejected. Arguably, something similar happens at the very end of the episode. Azula presents as being completely unaffected by the deep emotional revelations provided by Zuko, but also by Mei and Tai Li. But in truth, her being on the outside and not fully relating to these revelations gives her this deep sense of anxiety. And she lets slip what she does not present as a revelation, but still wants to be read as a revelation to some extent, which is that her mother did not care about her, that she thought she was a monster. But this in of itself is a kind of deceit, it's a kind of deception. Azula knows that's not true. We know this as the audience because when Azula is undergoing her deep, disconcerting psychological breakdown in the last few episodes of the show, her mother appears to her in this feverish vision. And says that she does, in fact, care about Azula, and that she always has. Her mother is obviously not there in that scene, 
in physical, actual reality. So the scene is a projection from Azula's psyche, demonstrating that she does know that her mom cares about her. Which is a fact that she has difficulty processing for a number of reasons, the foremost of which being that it undermines her basic worldview, which is that people are linked together only by fear and control, and that sympathy, compassion, and love are ultimately useless. But in that last scene, Azula is actually doing what she chastises the others for doing, that is, constructing a sob story to gain people's sympathy. The others are not, for the record. They are telling the truth, and they are quite earnest about it. But Azula is not. Certainly, some parts of that revelation are true. She says that her mother loved Zuko more than she loved her. I think that is probably true, <laughs> judging by how we see Ursa interact with the both of them. Again, it's not completely an unsympathetic behavior on Ursa's part, considering that Azula acts like she does, but it's understandable that Azula does feel a sense of inferiority in that one little regard, but she expands it in the beat revelation scene to make herself look like a kind of victim. Again, Azula desperately wants to be accepted, not simply for her power, not simply for her ability to strike fear and despair into the hearts of those around her, but because people actually care about her. This episode for Azula is a comedic shell disguising a tragic interior. It is her Desperately, whether she knows it consciously or not, trying to get others to like her for who she actually is and not for what she is. She wants others to care about her for her personal qualities and not for her status and her position within the Fire Nation hierarchy. And yet she is completely unable to do this. And this is quite tragic because what she is attempting is not altogether dissimilar from the journey that Zuko undergoes, at least at its start. Zuko does take on masks throughout his journey. There are the literal masks, such as the, the Blue Spirit. But... As important are the figurative masks, the cloaking of his identity. When he wanders through the Earth Kingdom in Season 2, he does not present to everyone as Zuko of the Fire Nation. In fact, the one time that he does forthrightly declare his identity in Zuko alone, he is very firmly rejected. Instead, he experiences the world as a refugee, just a fellow traveler destroyed by the chaos of the war. He gets to see life from that vantage point, and he gets others to accept him and to relate to him and open up to him as one of their own. This is important for Zuko because it allows him to see the world from a different vantage point. Matthew Arnold, the great Victorian critic, talks about the necessity of leaving one's own little individual perspective, one's own narrow viewpoint, forged from one's own personal experiences. There's nothing innately wrong with that personal viewpoint, necessarily. 
but it is insufficient to be able to truly understand such a complex world, such a world forged of a vast variety of different groups of people with different worldviews and philosophies and systems of belief. So, Arnold says, in a world that has broken down, that has lost a sense of coherence and continuity, the best option for one is to explore different perspectives, different preferences and ideologies to see how different people live and what they value and what they desire and attempt to attain for themselves. Not because any one of these perspectives ultimately has all the answers. In fact, a big part of Arnold's own ideology is that in this fragmented constantly fluctuating world created by modern commercial society, there is no one set of correct answers. Instead, one has to look around curiously and earnestly and gain personally by interacting with all of these different perspectives, all of these different ways of looking at the world. Azula can't do that. She does not have the credibility of Zuko. She only presents to others as a rather deranged and spiteful person who prioritizes power and domination above all else. She cannot disguise that fact except through willful artifice like in her behavior with Chan, because it is true to who she actually is. But it's a tragedy that she does see the world like that, because it is so restrictive and so completely deracinated from how other people live their lives that it prevents her from being able to step outside of the Azula persona, step outside of this position that she has, and to see the world as an ordinary person. Fire Nation citizen would see it. Now, obviously, Azula is not particularly ambitious in her attempt to step outside her own experiences and her own perspective. She admits that she does love it when people worship her, and... Even the quote-unquote real world for her is just this party that is comprised of the sons and daughters, it seems, of the Fire Nation elite. It's not going out into the war-torn little villages of the Earth Kingdom and hearing people's stories like Zuko does, but it's a start nonetheless. It could have been the first step to something else, to a greater reconsideration of her beliefs and her attitudes. It could have been the first step to her realizing that her priorities are a bit rigid and a bit absolutist. But she can't do that because she can't operate in that normal space. She can't form these organic interactions with other people because they are just terrified of her. They have no idea what to make of her. She's intelligible in the context of being this domineering princess who seeks to advance the interests of the Fire Nation through any means possible. But outside of that context, she's just completely absurd, and no one has any idea how to interact with her. They tactfully get as far away from her as they can, just like most people would when faced with a personality like Azula's. That is both completely understandable and rather tragic for Azula. It's an episode where she 
for once at least attempts to form connections with others and to look outside her own ideology, and she fails. So thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this one before anyone else. Keep watching Avatar. I'm very excited for that new Netflix live action show that's coming out. That's going to be great. Take care. Adios, comrades.